Well, thanks for coming. I'm going to talk about Collabor Online and Nextcloud. So what is Collabor Online? Well, it does all sorts of cool things in terms of document editing. It allows you to collaboratively edit just as you'd expect, see other people editing with you. Um, and of course, we've been focused on that in the browser. So, you know, uh, an equivalent to other web services out there. Um, and of course, on the mobile phone, either natively or inside uh, the Nextcloud environment there. So you can use the Nextcloud app and edit. And uh, more recently uh, with Google Chrome. Um, so we provide a very rich, interoperable editing experience there. So you can use your Microsoft file formats if you must, and that's fine. We interoperate with them nicely. Um, but also the open document format, which really uh, fits better to Nextcloud's ethos of open standards, I think. We've been developing really quickly in the last year. We've done a lot of things. Firstly, to try and get the software to people, we've provided these demo servers so that you can try it out very easily. And you can push your document to us and we'll show you very quickly what it would be like if you could host it yourself. Obviously, that doesn't work for everyone. Sometimes, you know, servers are locked down, they're in secure environments, uh, they're, they're separate uh, on separate networks, or they're very insecure. They're just a quick uh, setup on a small, small machine locally with HTTP and we don't want to risk your document. So uh, for those cases, uh, we, uh, you know, recommend obviously trying uh, the Docker yourself and downloading it. But we wanted to make that easier so, so that Nextcloud Hub would have a great office suite uh, you know, just out of the box that work really nicely. So to do that, we did this small PHP forwarding proxy uh, work, which is which is quite amazing. Uh, and that pulls an app image that then can be run uh, and be driven by that PHP piece. And that's great because it means there's no proxy set up, no port forwarding, whatever. Um, please upgrade. Once you've got it working and you, you love it, you know, once you've fallen in love, upgrade it and get all the benefits of the, of the faster uh, connection and sockets. Um, we, we basically do this on top of a Keep Alive HTTPS socket. We simulate a web socket on top of multiple um, secure sockets that are kept open there. And that, that means there's a certain degree of, of, of latency, although it's, it's absolutely, you know, it works well for, for, for small local teams. It's absolutely fine. Uh, for Calabra Office, uh, we've done this on, on iOS and Android now, bringing the same code there to mobile. And we've completely rewritten the mobile user experience. So one-handed use, you know, the things you expect on a phone, should be there now. So a new toolbar at the top there with the, the common features that you're going to want for you know the simple form of editing that people do on phones. I'm providing lots of the power there, taking the LibreOffice sidebar here that we've brought and folding that and presenting that as a series of uh, tool palettes at the bottom there. So you can see character properties here, paragraph properties, you know, setting options there. I'm um, just selected from a selection. But of course, if you select something else, uh, you know, chart type, you're going to get your chart a chart function, if it's a slide, you know, change your layout, change your master page and so on. Um, yeah, and uh, well, of course, inserting tables, many improvements here to the UI and making this uh, easy to drag and interact with and test uh, and play, play with, you know, get, get your document just as you like it, uh, tweaking images, you know, functionality of that brightness and so on, many things that others don't have. Um, collapsing menus for all of those difficult things, you know, download as one of these many, uh, many formats that we have there. Um, and of course, offline editing uh, is important. So, you know, you can sync your documents to your device uh, using your Nextcloud app, very important. And then, of course, just load and edit those very simply inside, uh, effectively the same UI uh, running locally uh, on your machine. I have about half a million installs of that so far. That's uh, very encouraging. And of course, Chromebooks, I mentioned that, important for education. Lots of people uh, love Chrome, Chromebooks for many reasons. Um, but, but having the ability to run natively on that when you're offline and to integrate that nicely with the Nextcloud app there is, you know, just another another great win, I think, for this year. And you can see some of the rich functionality we have there. So recently, we've brought out code 640. So this is our developer edition. Uh, check it out. See what's happened. One of the features is a big new version jump. So we've gone from uh, 47 to 64. So that makes, hopefully, the fewer versions to remember and aligns better with our underlying core uh, Office version. One of the things people have uh, complained about or what desired, you know, is, is a more familiar look uh, for different segments of the audience. Uh, so, so lots of people want this notebook bar like uh, tabbed uh, tool palettes. So we've, we've added those. And hey, you can collapse them to just a menu if you want to get that, that out of the way on your, you know, 16 by 9 screen. Uh, but of course, it's important that we don't, you know, sort of vandalize people's workflow they're used to. Uh, and we, of course, keep the classic mode, that, you know, very familiar toolbars and menus that you'll see in Google Docs and various other places. Um, that's actually the default for Nextcloud. Um, and you can configure the other options and, and, and check those out. Play with, play with that. Uh, split panes, very important for um, people caring about spreadsheets uh, and, uh, you know, ed editing rapidly there. Um, 
PDF. So we've done a whole lot of stuff to allow you to load PDF, search them, collaborate with them, annotate them, and do do good stuff with that so that you can work on, on PDFs as a, a much more of a peer, top tier uh, file format, uh, improving our smart art rendering and layout, uh, WAPI light locking, loads of other, other pieces that we've done uh, underneath here to make the code better. So user experience is something that we love, right? We want to be working on this to make this a whole lot better and, and slicker and smoother. And there's been some great work there, uh, you know, from the community, Andreas Kynes has done some great icon work. And we've built on that to make something uh, quite beautiful. We have a nice star guide you can check out. And we're now starting to do integration work inside our integration. So, you know, Collabor Online is an iframe that sits inside your, your app. But wouldn't it be nice if we could tell it a whole load of things, you know, in terms of uh, the default options, the styling, the theming, and so on. So um, you can see here, this is uh, what we're developing now um, to allow, you know, an, a better set of Nextcloud colors to be used and highlights. Uh, change change the background documents aside, you know, get rid of the sidebar by default, of course it's still there, and again the ruler off by default, just to present a more simple, a simple, uh, you know, get to work quickly, a uh, user experience, um, but of course with the power there if you need it uh, to turn on later. Clearly we work with Nextcloud, I mean, otherwise we wouldn't be here, but um, it's really good to emphasize that for any customers that strayed into this lightning talk, uh, that Nextcloud is really an awesome partner. You know, we work cross-team with them daily, um, it's just it's just great to work with Nextcloud, and, and thanks to all of these uh, these guys and many more who who we've worked with, uh, we deliver really for our joint customers, and it's fun for us working with Nextcloud. So I, I recommend it, uh, recommend them to you really. Um, that that allows as a customers to get you know professional services and support from a single a single place, you know, a single supplier, buy it through Nextcloud, a joint SLA, a clear place to file tickets, and no blame game. So we we really love that. I love that flow. There's a problem with the product, you know, if there is, we'll fix it um, as a team. So that's that's great. And here's here's our side of that team. So look at this, these awesome uh, awesome people in Almeria, uh, just a subset of the people uh, serving you. Well, one of our many focuses is privacy uh, and security, obviously. Uh, digital sovereignty uh, is, is really important to people. And so we have here, you know, this on-premise, uh, you know, networking uh, capability and this really secure way of securing your documents, you know, these very many layers. Look on our website, you'll find out more about what we do to make sure your documents don't escape. They stay inside your servers, inside your premise, on your network, and we post pixels to, to those who we trust. Now, there are very many other ways to do uh, digital rights management, document management. Um, one is uh, Microsoft's approach, I guess, which involves a single large American company signing everything from your BIOS, bootloader, operating system, office suite, holding all of the keys to all of your documents, and indeed this, this can do uh, rights management. Problem is, it's it's not wonderful in terms of the degree of centralization uh, that, that happens there. Another particularly bad way to do it is to hand the whole document data out to everybody, with even with view access, or uh, and send the whole whole document to each user, and uh, yeah, and then perhaps put some band aids over the top. And this is um, oddly popular, but of course far from secure. We instead send pixels. We watermark them. It's simple. It's elegant. It's federatable. Uh, you know, there's no central points of failure. It works with, uh, you know, Nextcloud's global scale. And, it, you know, as a corporation, it gives you the ability to know that, you know, you've got the latest designs for your, whatever it is you're doing, your aeroplane or something, and you want to send them to your, to, to more widely get feedback, input on, on those important style things. And you don't want the screenshots going somewhere. So watermark them all with, with people's names. Make sure that you, you know, that it's clear who leaked. And because of that, you can then collaborate more richly inside your company with that confidence uh, you can you can just do much better in terms of you know trusting your staff uh, to do the right thing and to give you feedback and help improve uh, your products. So of course, Collabora and LibreOffice. Um, we work as part of an awesome community. LibreOffice is a great uh, project. Sometimes we disagree, but you know that's that's all to be expected. Um, in terms of that, you know, online is, has been part of that, and, and Collabora has done ninety seven percent of the commits. Uh, we got a whole load of uh, pulls there. And we're going to be moving our development to GitHub. So we have a clear brand story, um, still continuing to work with and support LibreOffice, obviously, uh, but helping to drive that investment, avoid customer user confusion, avoid conflict in community. And that allows us then to remove this reminder for users that there's, there's a limit or that they really should get support because we'll make sure that whole flow is, is very clear, you know, about the importance of, you know, buying from Nextcloud, for example, to support the whole goodness of the ecosystem um, and giving clear credit. Uh, you know, ROI is important for us as a business so that we can continue to invest in, in software freedom. So let's make open source rock. Uh, that's our mission. Uh, we're delivering on it. Thank you for your time. Uh, and I look forward to uh, seeing you when we can travel again. All the best.